Hello! Welcome to Zen AF. Pod- I almost said it wrong. Zen AF Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, you are here with with Wayne Hanna and Alex Scooby. Alex Scooby and Wayne Hanna. Let's we could throw those two names around any which way we'd like to. Doesn't matter. It's still Zen AF Podcast. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, coming at you live and recorded, mostly recorded. Hi, Wayne. Awkward silence. There it is. <laughs> um, I, I'm still wearing pajama pants. I haven't showered in three days. Ah, I wanted to talk and about I'm, that. And I'm okay with it. Okay, so here's, here's something wild, everybody. So I have not showered since my wife left for Austin, which was about, I think, four days ago. Th- Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So three days. Wayne is the same, has not showered I feel like complete greaseball, and I'm itchy. How do you feel, Wayne? Well, I swam. Last night, I went in my pool for a second oh, or two. Oh, okay. And All it's right. salt water, so it's good for, it's good for you. Um, that's, <laughs> what, that's, what, that's what Cosmopolitan Magazine said. Do you remember, do you remember, and some of you young folks won't remember this, but back in the day when we would date, um, when magazines were a thing, mm-hmm. your girlfriend would come over. And I'm literally, I just want to let you all know that I'm thinking of this right now and I'm hoping it works out, which it usually does. But I was thinking about this right now. And remember when they come over and be like, Alex, we need to talk. I did a quiz on (laughs) asthma. And it says, it says we might not be compatible. And Paula Abdul, I mean, she met her husband because of this Cosmo quiz. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I still take them. Oh. So, uh, well, you and, also take Quaaludes. So yes, well, that's. I think I'm going to go off the Quaaludes, and uh, and just go and just go free spirit, free Willy. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about emojis. Oh so, fuck. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to spit out like so. People use emojis. A lot of people do when they text or when they you know. Uh, just communicate. Um, so I'm going to spit out a few emojis, and I just want to. I just want to hear the first thing that comes to your mind when I say an emoji. Okay. Just, just okay. Spit, Can spit you hang round. on? Can you okay, hang on? It. Because this is now a new thing, and I did not know this was going to happen. I didn't know. I don't think it's a new thing. No, it's but just no, what I no. wanted to do. No, I understand, but a new thing that we're doing in the podcast, and I think that when we used to do one word headlines, mm-hmm. um, we never had beginning music. And now that I'm a professional editor, ladies and gentlemen, hang on. I'm going to intro it and I'm going to put background music. Okay. So, and then I'm going to edit it in. Okay. I don't know if you had to tell everyone that, but okay, great. So now that that's there. Oh, all right. Well, here's the, here's the music. First thing that comes to your mind, uh, um, emoji time with Alex Scooby and me. Okay. Okay. So here's the first emoji. Ready? Here we go. Mm Mm-hmm. Banana. Mm. Awkward silence. John, John, jaundice penis. Okay, here we go. Eggplant. Big, big, swollen penis, stung by a bee. Okay, all right, great answer. Watermelon. Big old titty. <laughs> With a rash. <laughs> With a rash. <laughs> You said okay. the first thing that st- popped in my mind. Okay, one more. I just have one more. Uh, smiley face with a cowboy hat. Broke back mountains. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You won. Mm-hmm. You didn't mm-hmm. win really anything, what but el- I just... What else would they win? Oh, shit. We got to give away some mugs. Oh, <laughs> fuck. We got to do that. Yeah. We have a- Did I... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did I ever read the review, um, not about us, but so everybody knows I'm a connoisseur, a.k.a. I, That's I, I connoisseur. Like, There's no A. It's connoisseur. No, can, cannoisseur. Cannabis connoisseur. Oh, connoisseur. okay. You might be right with that one. Yeah, I am right with that one. You um, might be. I'm probably 80% chance. <laughs> but there was, I so one night I wanted to, I was like, I need to, I need to try this strain because this, 
this strain, I got this new strain and I wanted to give it a shot. So in, in Canada and in California and some other states, because why not do things as a collective group? Um, we, we thrive in the cannabis culture and people take the time to write reviews, but sometimes they write reviews whilst in the place of the, <laughs> of the strain. Yes. And I, I, I really, I called, I called Kelly immediately. I'm like, honey, we are smoking this tonight. She goes, why? What did that? And she immediately, immediately she goes, cause she knows I reviewed it. She, I read about it. She's like, what did the review say? Are you ready for this? I want to hear it. Why don't people write reviews about our podcast like they write reviews about this? No, I'm just kidding. They're this exact same, and it's amazing. Please review our podcast, and we'll send you a mug in within the next 3,942 days. But you will get a mug. Someday. We just don't know when. Here's the review. This is an at-work smoke. Hyper-focused and a sense that time is flying by, making my workday tolerable. So first of all, this human being is reviewing <laughs> about being stoned at work and how they're a better employee. I like it. <laughs> Task-oriented and no major side effects like dry mouth or red eyes, because your boss hates that. Your boss just, <laughs> you know what? Mark, can you come sit here for a second? Listen, we understand that you're you're high, but could you find a strain that doesn't give you dry mouth? Because you're a customer service agent, and it's just really weird. But it's no, like this guy, the whale. Remember fudging the whale, the fucking cake. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part. You think like this guy wouldn't have uh, this guy wouldn't have a dangerous job. I, I digress. Tested at LK Pure Labs and the technical data accurately represents the buzz. About an hour in, I definitely felt felt like I wanted to go home and knock the bottom out of the girlfriend. Instead, I went <sighs> and punched instead I went and punched the clown and the porta potty. It was an overwhelming, definitely a sexual rush with this smoke. Who the fuck? That's a Jeffrey Dahmer uh, review. That's probably no, that's Jeffrey a Dahmer. That's probably just a stoner that works in construction, and I really just hope that he he uh, he does well. I and and he is the reason why I smoked that last night. And um, none of that happened. I just I fell asleep with an erection. That's, well, that's... <laughs> you know what? I wish you were going to read a review that said something to this effect. Man, I am high as fuck. I can't believe I made it to work. I fly for American Airlines. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the fucking captain, like a pilot up there. I am high as fuck. Like, <laughs> smoking, smoking this strain really dials me in during surgery. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's heart doesn't look as messy as it used to. So, yeah. you know, here's here's something wild, man. So, you know, we are a Zen podcast. We are very mindful. Wayne and I are both uh, scientific non-scientists. Uh, we have a lot to say about the uh, upper ether of the stratospheric atmosphere with uh, neutrons and quasars and quasons. Um, I just realized that, now this is going along those lines, I just realized that when I eat too much pizza, I get childbirthing hips. So I'm glad that you brought that up. There was a study released uh, in 1994, just mm -hmm. shortly after the AIDS pandemic kind of leveled out. Okay. And it was a study on, on pizza and the brain. Okay. Now, you can eat an entire large pizza. Yes, you can. And immediately feel like you have childbirthing hips but that's impossible i mean you're going to if you keep eating said pizzas plural yes but it's just it's a mental thing and from a scientifically non-scientific place mm -hmm. um eventually that shit's gonna kill you yes also while we're on the subject 
I get a video chat. I get a video message. So Alex and I were we're ramping up our video messages to each other, and they're yes. just fantastic. And we wish that we could share them with you, but you know what? Some things are just left privately between Alex and I. Correct. Um, and plus, we don't know how to because it's in the moment. We don't know how to keep the videos there because they disappear. And that's <laughs> I wish I could have edited oh, what we my did God. today. I, that was they just so disappeared. Great. I couldn't get to it. I know, and we can't remake that because we don't. Uh -uh. But anyways, I get a video call from Alex the other day going, Wayne, I just slept in till 10 a.m. for the first time in like 3,900 years. And I said, Alex, you probably needed the sleep. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, he's tired. He's coming off a play. He's probably, he's got all this voice stuff happening. He's doing all kinds of things. He probably just needed a good night's sleep. No, it's because he didn't go to bed till 4 a.m. because he destroyed a bag of weed and a <laughs> bottle of tequila and then said, I feel I feel like I'm dead right now. And oh, God, if I'm going to be completely honest, Wayne, I mean, seriously. So I haven't touched booze in three days because of that night. And I'm going to say I'm going to keep it going because I don't know what happened, but I do know this. Uh, about midnight, I looked at my phone. I was like, it's midnight. And there was still a buddy of mine here. We had just grilled, we had grilled chicken and stuff like that. And, and I go, and I just remember saying like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then, I, and then I just woke up at 10 AM and I couldn't find my glasses. Right. I couldn't find my glasses. So I'm blind. So I'm walking around the fucking house, literally fucking anxiety attack through the roof anxiety trying to find my glasses and i uh, finally found them they were in uh they were in the kitchen and i'm not sure why i would take my glasses off in the kitchen to go to my bedroom which is across the house but i did that right so all i'm saying is i'm, I'm gonna chill for a little bit well you know, you know what the from the science community we okay well this uh, this was an experiment the thing that people don't realize is that um, Alex and I, yes, we are ma macho, manly, masculine. You know, we wear the pants in our relationships. They just, pick, <laughs> they just, they just pick them out and put them on, and awesome. then they also control the, then they also control the zipper, and yeah. like we do what we want when they tell us that we can, and then when yes. they leave. See, I don't live with Kelly yet. But when she leaves within that like 16 hours, she's gone. Sometimes yeah. 48 if she needs a break from me. Yeah. I fall apart. I fall <laughs> apart. Like, and we've only, we haven't even been together a year, but like, I don't function without her. And it's very much, no. you said two things to me. You said, Wayne, you know, you found the one when you laugh every day and when you fall apart when she leaves, because you, sir, every time Marine goes away. Mm hmm. So do yeah. you. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny is that and, and you're not wrong. You're act absolutely correct. It's funny mm -hmm. because so much of our life together is spent together. Right. Just kind of like, you know, what do you want to do? What, what should we do? Like, you know, whether it's like fucking gardening or, you know, building something or redoing the house or whatever we do, you know, going to lunch and just watching TV or whatever the fuck it is that when she goes away, I get this sense of. My first sense is like kind of like this, okay, well, yeah, you know what? If she's gone, I'm going to uh, just going to just do me. I'm just going to be fucking me. But the funny thing is, I am me when she's here. There is no change except for the fact that when my friends come over, when my wife is gone, quick, my friend Robbie, who's an older man, he every time my wife goes away, he goes, I just got tomahawk steaks. I'm bringing them over. We're going to have some beer and we're going to eat those steaks. I'm like, great. We could do that when she's here. But her being gone makes it a little like, ooh, the guys are going to get together and we're going to have a tomahawk steak. One thing leads to another. Next thing I know, I'm eating pebbles out of my fucking. Oh, oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't know. Some things are just supposed to be between you and me, Wayne. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> the secrets we tell. You know horrible, what? Horrible. I, I, I'll say this, and it's kind of, I'm glad that you brought that up, and I'm not going to give details. Be, and, and this is a serious moment. This is a mindful-ish moment and, and a zen moment. And I had a conversation with somebody that's becoming pretty close to me. He's a buddy of mine, and I'm getting to know oh, him. And, and good. Who's uh, that? What's his name? I can't. I can't. Wow. I can't. So now I it's a secret. Yet. It 
It's so now you have this thing that's going on where you fucking hang out, you're getting to know some you guy. You have Carl. You have Carl. Can I not have somebody? <laughs> you have Carl. Fuck you, Carl. You can I not have? Can I not have? Listen to me. Listen to Go me. Go ahead. Okay, do it. Do it. So he's struggling. He's struggling with anxiety. He's struggling oh. with with um, you know, he's 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 struggling with a few things, and um, he comes from. Uh, the the generation in the world where we were told to suck it up as men and we were told to to you know not not be vulnerable and it created an ego within this person and it uh the but the one thing i noticed because i don't want to go into details um mm -hmm. I, I he's going to be just fine and we're going to spend more time together but the one thing too is that Pete? his i know it's a lot ahead, but you're I'm sorry you're like so he he is still surrounded because he's he still lives where he grew up so he's still surrounded by those buddies that may not have grown up that like to crush a two mm -hmm. for a beer and mm -hmm. shoot things and you know do the rednecky stuff and and yeah. he's he's he he you can see that he wants to get away from that and he wants to try hanging out with a different group of people that maybe don't drink every day or you, you know like that yeah. like go golfing and stuff and and i find it's really hard to like it, i moved away from home when i was young so i'm not sure and i had no friends so i'm not surrounded by the people i go. grew up with but it's got to be tough for you know like the guys want to hang out and some of our buddies like to still get polluted and we might not or we might i don't know like it depends mm -hmm. and then peer pressure like you're 49 years old and you still give into peer pressure Mm -hmm. And I'm 42. We we do. We give into as 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 men. We still give as humans. We still give into peer peer pressure. We don't want to maybe stay up till two three in the morning and and party our faces off. Maybe we want to get a good night's sleep. But your buddies come over, and next thing you know, you're you're drinking shots of tequila out of their belly buttons. Well, I want to say something. Aside from the belly button tequila drinking, I will say this. I my biggest power in life at this point is the word no. That's my biggest power. And I've gotten yeah. really good at saying it. No. So I'm not going to blame anyone for my debauchery because I am a 49-year-old man. So if my friends come over, we got a case of beer, there's tequila, there's weed, there's steak, there's fucking potatoes, whatever it is, I'm going to do as I please, right? Those choices might not be the best, especially for health reasons and mental health, but I will do what I choose to do. OK, I mean, when I was younger, peer pressure was fucking insane. I mean, it was insane. I did stuff that I, I, I didn't want to do or I was like embarrassed to do or I, I felt guilty about doing. Now, I mean, my wife can peer pressure me. I mean, she can, um, you know, but here's something wild that you were talking about this dude. Uh, you said that he, you know grew up in a family or, or or an environment i don't know this person that is very small town macho, very small, small town, town very you know kind of a maybe a, I, I you know this term is is loose but like redneckish where you know you suck it up you know all this stuff the problem with that is it's creating it's creating horrible mental places for for men, especially mm -hmm. for men Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. And I think that's where a lot of our violence and shit comes from. Like these people, mm -hmm. they act out, you know, it's like. And by the way, I don't know how old this person is, but if you still live in the same place that you grew up in. I'm not putting I'm not saying this is it's a horrible thing, but what I am saying is that your mind cannot expand. Mm -hmm. It can't expand. It's impossible to expand your mind in the same place that you've grown up. It's, it's mm -hmm. impossible. You have to go away. You have to go see things. You have to meet people. You have to talk to people. You have to, you have to go out there. Right. I mean, you just do. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's the goal, you know, is, is for, for him to get to a place where he can do that stuff and, 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 you know, see, live outside of the box a bit to see the greener grass because you you become a better person now i i will say this i wasn't talking about you specifically you are the bad influence um, yes i i hadn't been drunk in years and then i came to your place for four days and all i remember is trying to drink a bottle of water while eating a taco at a taco truck in austin <laughs> texas by myself Oh I yeah, didn't know my name, and it was eight fourteen p.m. You're, well, you're still a bad influence. Just way <laughs> earlier in the day. 
<laughs> my old in my older years now, I yes, my bad influences take place between four and nine PM. He, That's it. He comes over, he comes over to my airstream that one time and, and he's like, Wayne, <laughs> I was thinking about this. I'll tell you what, he says, happy hour starts at three PM. Can't beat that. We can be home and done, slaughtered, naked. <laughs> On the sidewalk by like seven forty-five. It doesn't get better than that. It well, I want to defend that. myself. I got to defend myself because, and I have my wife to fucking go along with this. We go out, right? So we go out. <laughs> we go out. We go out to this street called uh, the 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 popular street in Austin, Texas. Oh my God, Rainy, Rainy Street. Rainy Street. Thank you. Yeah. We go out to Rainy Street. We do a little bar hopping, right? <laughs> we we're out there. We're doing a bar hopping, and all of a sudden. My wife and I want to go home because it was like fucking 930 or whatever fucking time it was. It was 730. Okay, fine. But it was dark out. And that's my calling card. When it's dark, yeah. I'm out. So uh, so we're about to leave. And I see Wayne is with this group of people. We have no fucking clue who these people are, right? And I walk up to him. I'm like, hey, man. And, and the other people are like, hey. And I'm like, okay, don't want to do this. Hey, Wayne. Hey, we're going to leave. You ready? He goes, I'm going to hang out with these people. And we're, I'm like, are you sure you want to do that? You're in Austin, Texas. Are you sure you want to do that? And he's like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, cut to, we leave. I'm kind of not worried, but I'm just like, yeah, I hope he's not fucking. That dude wound up at four gay bars, met some dude named Nick that he still talks to and won't talk to me about. And next morning, he tells me that he may or may not have fucked a squirrel to death. That is not entirely true. <laughs> I did I did not meet a guy named Nick. 